welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week's guest yacht is from a storied French brand whose fame has been rekindled more recently through the exploits of the YouTube family on Sailing Zatara. Purchased by Hansa in 2019, Privilege has launched a new version of Zatara's beautiful 585, the new Privilege 580. Today, we are going to review its specifications, pricing, and layout against three similar new yachts. Do a full tour asking, as usual, what would Sylvia say? Naval gaze at an innovation and or adjustment that might make life aboard easier, although that's difficult with this yacht. Have a look at the used market for a three to five year old comparables, and finally, give it a Dave score and compare the results to our previously reviewed yachts. Starting high above Vancouver, British Columbia, we fly, fly across the Atlantic to the west coast of France and the home of last week's yacht at the Excess Lagoon Yards in Bordeaux. From there, we bounce north up the coast of France to the Privilege Yards in the Sables Olonne, where the 580 is built. For our wine pairing this week, we move inland, northeast to Le Pieu Notre Dame and Manoir de la Tête Rouge. The Manoir de la Tête Rouge has been around since 1649, based in the Samar region of the Loire Valley. Certified organic since 1998 and certified biodynamic since 2010, Manoir de la Tête Rouge vineyards sit on clay, limestone, and silt soils. The grapes go through seven days cold maceration with juice-free run, then malolactic fermentation in concrete tank on leaves, eight months aging in concrete tanks, and finally body, bottled unfiltered and unfined. Oh, it's beautiful. Let's go have a look at that boat. Looking at this yacht, I mean, absolutely beautiful lines. It's so refined. It's hard to describe the impact it has. Uh, you know, every angle, every aspect, every detail is perfected. It, it truly is like a Rolls Royce of these types of yachts. Uh, it has literally everything. It has a fly lounge. It has a front cockpit. It has absolute clarity from a, a mid-range bridge where you can talk to the fly lounge and the cockpit and you can see all four corners. I mean, you really can't get much better. Now, just as a preface, if you haven't figured it out yet, I love this yacht. And I promise you, I am not uh, a lackey for, <laughs> for, uh, Privilege or Rob Poirier, who I think is just a fantastic gentleman and a scholar as well and represents Privilege America. So if you ever have a chance to talk to Rob, he's knowledgeable, honest, wonderful guy and represents the brand beautifully. Now, moving into the statistics, you can see here uh, the Privilege 580 uh, with its 213 square meter uh, upwind sail area is, is really fantastic. So you got a lot of upwind sail area. You also have a lot of heft to move around. Uh, as we move on to the actual cabin top, you can see the comparative to the others. Um, the uh, the, 50, the Ultramare 55, uh, and the Bally 54, of course, look a little wider. The ORC actually also looks a little wider. I'm sure the beam's a little wider on that one. The ORC is quite an extraordinary yacht, uh, so I'm not surprised there. Um, the Privilege has, you know, for its size, uh, pretty fine lines here. Uh, and you can see, again, that cabin top lounge area is just fantastic. It, the, only, the only other one that has anything like that is the Bally 
And again, the Valley 5.4 is the only one with the uh, forward cockpit. Uh, but the execution on the Privilege 580 forward cockpit is just extraordinary. Moving into the saloon and the main deck, um, obviously you, you've got a lot of space on this yacht. Um, although the, uh, the Outremer uh, has executed their saloon almost flawlessly. Uh, you know, I was stunned at the space on the Ultramar 55 when I walked into it. Uh, but the privilege, you know, the impression, it's, it's hard to express the impression when you walk onto the Pri Privilege 580 and walk into that saloon. Uh, every little detail stands out to you. Uh, the inlaid chrome around the marble inlay in the center of the, the oak table. Um, the, the leather covers on the flawlessly executed stainless steel hardware. Um, just every tiny little detail is executed. The, the stitching, um, it, it really is hard to express unless you've actually seen it. Uh, the Valley 5.4, of course, massive space. Uh, very innovative uh, in the way they've executed, but, you know, it's, it's sort of like comparing, and, and I don't want to be harsh here, but it, it's sort of like comparing a, I don't know, a, a Toyota to a Bentley. Um, beautifully executed, but, you know, the Bentley, what can you say? Uh, moving into the cabins, Again, uh, you've got the athwartship berth. You've got on that forward owner's cabin, um, you know, the space is hard to express unless you've been in it. And on uh, the version that I would pick, which has the uh, forward cockpit, you even have a beautiful curved staircase up from the owner's cabin into the forward cockpit along with saloon access directly into the forward cockpit. And the space, the ventilation, the windows, the sunshine, everything is, is absolutely to an extraordinary level. Now, looking at the numbers, um, you've got, uh, obviously the, the Bali has the price advantage <laughs> You're not buying a privilege for price. Uh, the privilege here, you, you know, you've, you've got uh, 2.5 million euro, the equivalent in U.S. dollars. Actually, the U.S. is a little lower now. Um, the privilege has the greatest, actually, length and width here, according to the stats. Obviously, have some of my dimensions or, or relative sizes incorrect on my overview. Um, the uh, air draft on the privilege is the greatest at 90.5 feet. Uh, the upwind sail area uh, and the main sail on the privilege are the greatest by, well, quite a long shot. So the next closest one would be the ORC at 191 square meters. I mean, given the... <laughs> the displacement of that ORC-57, that thing must just be a rocket. But uh, the Privilege 580 at 213 square meters versus, you know, basically 150 plus on, on the other two. Uh, the displacement though, okay, so you're talking 21, 29 tons uh, versus uh, our friends at Utremer at 14 ton. Um, ORC, uh, gosh, at, at 12 ton, um, and then, uh, our friends over at Bali, they've done pretty well, you know, 21 ton for a 54 foot vessel. It isn't claiming to be a performance. Uh, so you need every square meter you've got on the privilege. Uh, having said that, that kind of girth and, uh, hull shape. Uh, will do very well in heavy weather. Uh, you'll probably be quite comfortable. Uh, Privilege has the greatest uh, horsepower on their standard engines at 75 horse. 
uh, and they're just shy of the greatest uh, fuel and water capacity at 1,000 litres versus the Bally at 1,200. Um, the overall uh, hull manufacture or materials, you'd probably score the ORC 57 at the best with its uh, e-glass and vinyl ester. Uh, and then uh, system voltage uh, on all of them is 24, save for the Bally at 12. Uh, so there you have it, uh, a very, very nice vessel. Now, moving on board, what would Sylvia say? Well, <laughs> Sylvia would be freaking enchanted, say for the price. So here we are at the aft end. And, you know, I, again, you really have to see this vessel in person to grasp the way everything comes together to impact you uh, on an impression basis. Uh, look at the quality of all the upholstery. There are no wrinkles. There are no odd little ripples. Everything is perfect. Look at that solid table. Look at the beautiful finish uh, under the, uh, the bimini. Heading into the machine space, it's, again, just the same as everywhere else. It is beautifully done, beautifully laid out, Lots of room to move around in. You've got a full shaft drive there, so maximum reliability. All of your automatic fire uh, prevention is there. So, you know, you could have a party in this machine space. Now, a little navel gazing, speaking of machine spaces. We're going to talk about the integral uh, generator, which basically goes onto your engine. You don't have to have a generator. You have one on each of your two engines, so you even have backup to your energy generation. So the integral generator is fitted to each engine uh, of your catamaran. It generates energy seamlessly under normal operation. Your existing engine has a significant amount of spare capacity. An integral harnesses this spare capacity to generate electrical energy to be stored for later use, all while keeping your engine running at optimum performance. Now, this is a key. Your engine is running at optimum performance. So, Integral exploits the fact that there's a significant power gap between the optimum efficiency load line on an engine and the load applied by the propeller, the green and blue lines respectively in the following diagram. The generator is used as a precisely managed variable load in addition to the propeller load to operate the engine at or near optimum efficiency. And this is what really sets this apart from just slapping on a big old alternator. The result is one engine doing two jobs, turning the propeller and generating electricity with both tasks delivered at the best possible fuel efficiency to save fuel. Since boat speed is locked to propeller speed with a well-governed modern engine, adding the generator load does not change the boat speed. As a practical example, at a cruising speed of 1700 RPM with a typical 60 kilowatt engine, the propeller load is about 8 kilowatts and the optimal engine load is about 22 kilowatts, leaving 14 kilowatts of excess power. At this speed, the integral generator produces 8 kilowatts of electrical power and applies around 11 kilowatts of mechanical load on the engine, moving the total engine load into the optimal operating area. This is, this is something you really need to think about because this is what sets this completely apart from just, again, slapping on a giant alternator. Now, what makes this all work is lithium ion battery banks that allow you to so store this extra capacity at a massive speed and rate. So Integral generates up to 18 kilowatts of energy with a dual system, so 9 kilowatts per engine, and improves the fuel efficiency of the propulsion engine up to 25%, reducing overall vessel fuel consumption. It is fully automatic, 
managing electrical power generation, storage, conversion, and distribution in one package. And one of the things you've got to do is go to their website. They've got a fabulous calculator there that calculates all of your inputs, whether you've got extra solar, uh, all of the, the consumptive loads that you've got on your vessel, and tells you how big a battery bank you need, and you know, combined with your integral uh, um, uh, generator. So the primary difference between integral and, say, a master volt system, which is exactly the question I've been asking, is sustained output. The master volt alternator is a standard design high performance alternator. They do deliver a high output for a short period of time, but as soon as they warm up, they derate to one third of their peak rate performance. The integral generator has been optimized to do the following. Software limited at 9 kilowatts, sustained output at 8 kilowatt plus, diode pack and other sensitive electronics have been removed to the integral controller. Removing the electronics allows better airflow and cooling, and as does the large frame design. The integral control, integrated controller can determine if the boat is in gear or neutral and adjust accordingly. It can pro be programmed to provide very, uh, very high output uh, at low RPM, which again maximizes your boat's uh, engine's performance, putting proper load on it. It can be programmed to cha charge the lithium ion batteries per a custom charge profile, and charge algorithms are altered by engine RPM, uh, engine horsepower, temperature, and the engine power curve versus propeller power curve. The master bolt alternator comes as is with very little flexibility regarding configuration for the above parameters. So this is not just your normal slap on a giant alternator and hope for the best. This is really a remarkable system and um, actually balance is utilizing it and having great luck on it, and, and more and more are looking at it. Integral themselves, I met them at the show, and they also integrate in, in, indicated that they're looking at building their own parallel uh, electric hybrid system, which would be quite spectacular. Okay, moving back on board, here we are looking around this beautiful cockpit. Look at that, even the impression that the back wall with that lift up uh, window on, on a hydraulic assist gives you, it looks so solid. Every aspect of this boat looks completely, look at the ceiling, the, the, the detail, the embedded different color of the ceiling panels with the integrated uh, indirect lighting and the pot lights and the sky um, uh, skylight there. Uh, huge windows uh, looking all around, multiple skylights, this beautiful fridge, full stainless steel interior. Look at the handles and the hardware on that fridge. Um, the stainless steel uh, little bevels. Look at this is what I've talked about before. Oak table, embedded a center bit of marble surrounded by embedded stainless. Look at the stitching. Look at the brush stainless behind that as an inlay. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm not a fan of, of forward-facing nav stations, but this nav station, you could land an aircraft on it, and it's beautifully integrated with a real chair you can sit in. The kitchen uh, galley, apologies, looks absolutely extraordinary. The countertops are first-rate. Uh, no just kind of bland look to them. They've got pattern. Moving down the stairs, uh, beautiful use of mirrors to expand the space. We're in the passenger, compart the passenger compartments here. Um, every aspect of this, you've got huge storage capacity and every surface feels high quality. Nothing is left, like look at even the in inset uh, brushed stainless strips in there um, and then moving into the uh, head you've got beautiful um, uh, teak floorboards there real glass partitions um, your soft touch wall panels uh, contrasted by your beautiful 
uh, wood faced, real wood faced uh, uh, doors and your hardware is all extremely elegant. Moving back into your VIP suite, my gosh, look at the windows. I mean, it's flooded with light. You got indirect lighting. All your upholstery is perfect. You got an overhead hatch there, built in fans. Um, and, and there's your second head. Uh, again, every aspect of it screams, I'm quality. I'm a Rolls. I'm a Bentley. I'm a Merc well, No, I'm a Rolls. I'm a Bentley. Uh, moving up back into the, uh, the the saloon again, every aspect of this, your TV is fully integrated. The fiddles in stainless. Look at those stairs. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Again, your mirror accents, your aft cabin. This is a four cabin layout. Uh, look at the uh, paneled soft finish there at the head of the bed. Uh, you've got uh, your little countertops for you there. Your head, again, beautifully executed. Uh, real glass doors. Um, look at the finish even on the wall panels here. I, I know I sound like I'm gushing, but wow. Every aspect of this boat was perfect. Look at the hardware, the overlaid leather. Uh, you know, you, you can't say enough about this. Sylvie would lose her mind as she walked through this. Now look at this owner's cabin, the size of the windows. And here's the thing. You can have the option with the forward access to the forward cockpit. Um, again, the master bedroom, you've got the beautiful hatch above allowing beautiful ventilation, um, fantastic head compartment. Uh, you know, every aspect of it feels, uh, gives you that perception of high, high. Look at the stitching. Look at the stitching on even the soft touch countertops here. Um, every aspect is, is done to perfection. And again, look, even the shower head there, the rainfall shower head, the, the embedded custom teak, uh, uh, panel for your, uh, shower controls, moving up the stairs again, you've got the stainless and look across the way, the soft touch panels in the front of the island there with the polished stainless insets. Um, if I say much more, I'm going to sound like a privileged salesman, but wow, this, this boat hit every aspect of my desires in a boat. And you know, it's only 58 feet. And, and when I say only, I mean, there's a lot here for 58 feet. So look at your uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, station here with a real uh, glass windshield there. Obviously, you've got a hard top overhead with a pullout cover. Um, you've got a flip down solid teak uh, footrest. Look at the diamond stitching in your in your uh, cushions. Um, I mean, wow! And looking at your ability to see every angle, both bows, both sterns, probably more clearly than just about any other boat that I was on. And now your steps up to your fly lounge beautiful solid thickness they have a sense of solidity to them again out here look at your solar panels you don't see any little knobby stick-ups where they wire in you don't see any exposed wires even on on the uh, uh the helm uh, bimini everything is perfectly integrated it looks like it was built this way look at the beautiful solid table there there's no wrinkles in your uh, in your upholstery uh, and I of course just had to sit down because look at the view from this spot uh, and you're still getting over 200 square meters of sail area um, so you know hats off to privilege uh, this is 
an absolutely extraordinary yacht. Um, you know, moving back down into the helm and then onto the side decks, beautiful wide side decks, lots of lounging area. Um, every aspect of the boat is polished off beautifully. You've got recessed hatches or flush mounted hatches, solid, mm. solid steel hems. Look at this. Now, my bugaboo, those silly uh, lines that you have, and they're usually just enough to let you do a nice Nadia common each over the top. Here you have solid rails at a real height that could actually stop you. Beautiful princess seats. Um, and then looking across the bow, here's a, another quick look at the signature version, which has the front access into a front cockpit. This was the circumnavigator version, uh, which has massive storage space instead of the front cockpit. Uh, I would go with the signature myself. I know I'm somewhat impractical, but there you go. Uh, again, your chain for your uh, anchor is all... Uh, recessed so you don't have to see it or any of the muck it brings up. Look at the beautiful electric furlers and I don't know why others shy away from them. I mean Oyster uses them, Privilege uses them, Rob tells me he's seen less problems with these than you would with a manual and you got to believe Rob. So moving down the side uh, beautiful clear access. There's no spaghetti line all over the place. Uh, this is just executed to almost perfection in absolutely every area. The uh, look at gorgeous. Now, I'd like to take one more minute here to ask you if you're enjoying the content, if you could hit subscribe, hit a like, and share this with a couple other other like-minded boaters. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much. Moving into pre-owned comparables. Our first uh, one is a <laughs> Neil 65. Uh, that is a monstrous boat. Uh, you know, probably monstrous to try and find moorage for as well, but wow, do you have space on it. So uh, we're looking at a 2020, uh, and they're asking 1.630 versus... Mm -hmm. Uh, sail away on a privilege 580. We, as always, tag on 50 points to the sail away uh, at 3.750 USD. So, you know, if you're looking at half the price, uh, now there's no comparing the finishes. Uh, you are buying sheer square footage with the 65. Uh, there's almost enough there to make me consider it. Um, but if I had the bubble, the budget for the privilege, I'd still do the privilege. Looking then on to uh, a privilege 640. So this is series six, it's a 2020. Uh, it's looking at uh, 3.4 versus 3.750. Um, I would probably, again, if I had the budget, uh, drop the additional uh, 350 and go with the 580 in the signature version. Uh, that front cockpit, that fly lounge, just the way everything is executed so beautifully. The access from the owner suite up into the front cockpit, um, to me, makes the 580 just the creme de la creme. Moving again then to uh, Lagoon 620, a 2017 vintage. We're looking at about two million bucks. Um, you know, that's a lot of boat, the 620. Uh, it, it's not going to perform as much as the Privilege. The Privilege will be a more balanced performance versus luxury boat. Uh, if you have the bucks, the extra <laughs> 1.75, uh, yeah, I do the Privilege still. Uh, then moving on to uh, Outremer 5X. So it's a 2019, it's a 60-foot boat. And they're looking at uh, 1.9 uh, versus 3750. I would, you know, they're totally different boats. Even me looking for Sylvia, I, I, I'd have to hesitate here. Uh, you know, you're, you're talking about close to 2 million more. Um, 
and a 5X is one heck of a yacht. I, if I had the cash, I'd probably still do the privilege, but as a practical individual, uh, whoo, even if I had the cash, I'd have to look at this real hard. Um, Sunreef, 60. Uh, we're looking 2021, so almost new. 3.6 versus 3.750. I'm sorry, there's absolutely no question here. I'd go with the privilege. Uh, Sunreef is an interesting boat, um, but the privilege uh, is executed with so much more, dare I say, class and elegance. Uh, the privilege would be mine, and I would be beating that Sunreef 60 in any race known to man. Finally, the Bali 5.4. Now, this is not even a real comparison, but your 2021 Bali 5.4, 1.750 versus 3.750, 3 million bucks more. Uh, you know, the Bali 5.4 is a heck of a deal for what you're getting, um, but it's not a privilege. Uh, having said that, I... I yeah, of, of the Bally's, the 5.4 was my favorite when I saw it. The dimensions in that stretched out 54-foot version start to make sense. Um, it all depends on what you want, what you're doing. You know, if you're a, a dollar-conscious person, even if you had the cash, you, you'd be hard-pressed. I know I'll probably get some flashback on that. The privilege, there, there is no comparison. It's an extraordinary vessel. But the Bally 5.4 is no slouch either. Uh, I'll leave that to you. So now we're moving on to the Dave score. Well, here we go. Remember to participate in the Dave score. I've left a link in the description below. Uh, I'd love your feedback. Uh, see what you think. Uh, but here we go. The, the Dave score puts the privilege at 85 out of 100 and right on top, about 10 points ahead of the Utramira 55. Um, you know, you're looking at elegance. Interior is a 9 out of 10. Exterior is a 10 out of 10. Uh, comfort, interior, 9 out of 10. Exterior, 10 out of 10. There's really no way to argue this. Quality, 9 out of 10 all the way, if not higher. Performance, 7 out of 10. I might have scored that a little high, but, um, you know, it's got a lot of sail area. Uh, and then moving into the laser lazy, lazy sailor category, 7 out of 10. Um, it does have everything back to the helm, but there's no extraordinary aspects like a, a dock mate or bow stern thrusters etc etc condo 9 out of 10 i mean <laughs> my house isn't as comfortable as this boat uh geek score 8 out of 10 i love that front accessed uh um cockpit with both access from the uh, owner suite as well as the front and value for money i probably scored a little high at 7 although you know it how do you do this? It's very subjective. It depends on how big your pocketbook is. I mean, what is value? Um, I probably edge out the Ultramare 55 at a higher value for money. Uh, just, again, gut feeling, but it gets really hard. But anyways, we've got the privilege at the top of the pile right now. If I had three point. 750 oh, USD to spend. I am quite certain I could convince Sylvia to get on this boat. So, with that said, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm going to leave you with Art of the Region. Uh, we have this week, we've chosen uh, Patrick uh, Briere uh, and his painting, The uh, Village Breton. Uh, Patrick's artistic path tends towards the simplification of forms, bordering on abstraction, with an almost Fauvist-inspired harmony. The French painter's compositions are colorful evocations of a fleeting moment. As a result of his consistent searching, Pierre's paintings are by no means frozen. Color and light are vir virtual elements of the identity of his pieces. 
and he translates through oils, acrylics, charcoal, and pastels. pastels. I love this piece. I hope you love it as well. Um, please like, subscribe, and if you're looking for another opinion on this boat, uh, you can see it in the attached uh, recommendation here. Thanks so much. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.